Hey, good looking. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me if you're coming over from Katie's channel. We have a great palette to bring to life today. I am bringing to life today the Urban Decay Naked Teal Palette. I believe that's what it's called. So today I chose single eyeshadows for my collection to bring to life a palette that Angela from Doodles by the Bunny has um, created. And I put a fun little twist on this. I decided to ask Katie Marie, which is where I actually found bringing palettes to life from, to dupe a palette with me. But I said, let me pick the palette for you and you pick the palette for me. So we kind of gave each other a little twist on that regard. I had a, I will say it, I will say it right now. I had a one up. I have been watching Katie's channel for like, I would say about six months now. So I'm pretty familiar with her single eyeshadow collection. And I will tell you, I held back at nothing. And I gave her a challenging palette. I gave her the Urban Decay Karma palette. I thought it would be a fun, flirty, for floral um, palette that she could put some neons in. And um, also kind of really search the depths of her single eyeshadow collection to find those shades. And then she chose for me the Urban Decay Teal palette, which I have brought to life with my single eyeshadow collection. So that's kind of the fun little twist. So if you guys are interested in seeing the Karma, the Urban Decay Karma palette come to life, go check out Katie's page. And if you're interested in seeing the Urban Decay Teal Life palette put to life and um, what single eyeshadows I used for that, a swatch party and a tutorial, then stick around because it's all coming up right now. First, let's get into the swatches of the palette. Okay, this is the Urban Decay Naked Teal palette and the first shade, oh boy, we're starting out with a winner. I don't even know the name. I did message Angela. She never got back with me, but I chose the shade Terra Moon's Snow Globe for that. It looks white in the pan, and then when you put it on your arm and actually swatch it out, it kind of gives like an aqua teal shift with a really, really high green reflect. I just love this shadow. Um, these shadows don't quite love me. They have a pretty oily consistency, so I have to be careful on how I use them, and I actually use them on the inner corner of my eye. I use the shadow on the inner corner of my eye today. Siesta Key by Coastal Sense is what I use to dupe the shade I'm Blue, and I feel like it's a satin shade that really complements the palette really well. However, it does lean blue, but if you look at the palette, she does put some blue leaning shades in the lighter section, and as we approach the darker section, we'll get into the full-blown teals. But it's just a really good satin um, light blue shade with kind of a nice shift. So Divina Cosmetics Altair is what I used for the shade WBU, which I found out stands for What About You. This shadow is a multi-chrome and it is got a nice like purpley pink shift to it and it's super super beautiful on the eyes. I do have a video on the Star Chasers collection, which I'll go ahead and link for you in the eye and down below. You guys can go check it out, but I actually use that on my one of my eyelids. But the pink shift to it, I thought just kind of gave it a nice little twist that I really enjoyed. It just looks so gorgeous. Summer Magic by Sydney Grace is the shadow that I used for that creamy beige that is called Stone, er, excuse me, what about you? And the previous shade was actually Calm Water. I'm sorry about that. I got ahead of myself. And this is just like a nice creamy matte peach. Works really well, blends out easily. There is nothing wrong about this shade whatsoever. It's just very beautiful. Effect Hollow is the Glam Shop shadow that I used for stone. I feel like it looks just like a stone in the pan with the different um, shades. 
that are found within the pan and you can see on my finger swatch there that there's a holographic reflect to the mica particles and it is super gorgeous i thought it was a nice little liberty that i could take with the palette it gives kind of like a gray aqua shift i feel like am i the only one that sees this maybe i'm not sure <laughs> but it is gorgeous and i'm bringing this closer up to the camera for you guys to see really take a look hopefully you guys can see a little bit of that holographic reflect going on it is gorgeous I also use that on the center of my lid today in the tutorial, so make sure you stick around. Yeah, when you get really close up and you shine a light on it, then you can really see the holographic particles reflect amazingly. Mint Green by Sydney Grace gives the shade Aqua brought to life. And for this, I think it does lean a little bit more green, but I felt like it was a nice teal shade, even though the shadow is named mint green. I thought it was a beautiful shimmer that I could add to it and just really brought to life the Urban Decay Teal Palette. Next up, we have Shop Miss A's from their I'm a Beach Palette, and it is called Jungle. That dupes the shade for teal. It's a really nice matte, but you do see that I have to build it up quite a bit. I also use this shadow. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Nope, I don't use this in my tutorial, but it's just a really nice teal aqua shade. I think the palette's out of stock right now, but it's only $10 and you get nine shadows with a palette. Wreath is the next shadow and it's going to dupe tealy good i thought this shadow was so pretty it leans a little bit more blue and i know that doodles by the bunny definitely puts more teal leaning shadows in her in her palette but i thought this looked so pretty i just couldn't leave it out and it was actually a lot harder than i thought to find shadows that didn't lean too cool or too um, a lean too green or too blue. Siren Call by Sydney Grace is going to bring to life the shadow Don't Slate and it brings more of the gray undertones to the palette. It goes on a little patchy as well and I do have to build this up. You'll see a couple times that I'm building this up. <clears throat> but overall, it just brings like a nice gray undertone to a teal shadow. Houdini by Makeup Geek, and this is in the old round pans, is going to do, or excuse me, bring to life the shade teal or no teal. Again, it, this one leans a little bit more blue than it does teal. Finding that balance of green and blue was definitely the most challenging part to this, and I definitely leaned more blue than I did green. Okay, Coastal Scents Deep Roast brings to life the shade I dig it. It's just a nice dirty brown, dark. I use it as my liner in today's tutorial. It is one of those shadows that does need to be built up quite a bit. <clears throat> but it does look really nice and brown. <laughs> There's really not too much to say. It's a nice, beautiful matte brown, and I really like its formulation. I know Katie Marie, she says that Coastal Scents isn't one of her favorite shadows but formulation, but I like it. Okay, so lastly, Thrilled by Sydney Grace brings to life the last shadow in the palette, Teal Bird. And I think this actually captures the teal perfectly in the palette. It's really deep. You do have to build it up to get it as dark as what you would see in a shadow in Doodles by the Bunnies palette, but I think overall that one suited the palette just fine. All right, how do you think I did overall bringing to life the Urban Decay Naked Teal palette? 
leave a comment down below on how well you think I brought to life the palette. So now that you guys have seen the swatches of the palette, um, I do want to get into this tutorial and show you guys how you can create a beautiful teal eyeshadow look, creating some of the very textured shadows in the palette. I tried to use the multi-chromes, the duochromes, um, the holographic shadows. If you're interested in this tutorial, let's see how I created this look. Summer Magic in the crease with a fluffy blending brush. And I'm also blending it up in the transition area as well to make things a little bit easier to blend and also hopefully to warm and soften the edges so that the blue greens don't look um, bruisey on my skin. Carry down underneath what's left over, just kind of helps set that concealer in place. Deepen the crease with this Reef shade, Ruffer 15, and the previous brush that I used is from a brush set and I'll link that in the eye for you guys. It's um, a Chinese artisan brush set that I found on AliExpress and I've, I've reviewed it. really love the brush set. So I'm gonna link it for you up there. Ooh, pretty, pretty. Okay, I'm switching over to a crimped ferrule, a pinched ferrule blending brush, which is basically just this part is pinched. So it's the same as the previous brush, just pinched. And that way I can just basically lay it and just kind of smooth over the edges. I thought that I had grabbed a pinched ferrule brush, but I guess I didn't, so. <laughs> just deepening out that outer V now. And I'll go ahead and bring just a little bit of it underneath. Yeah, because that's the only shade that I have. Uh, actually, no, I think I'm going to use the cream and the brown shade to deepen or to do the lower lash line. Backing out with that blending brush and just go over these edges to soften. And I pull out a lot of blend over in this area and then I kind of tighten it up into the crease when I get on the inner portion of the eye. That just looks the best for my shape and just kind of elongates and lifts up the eye for me. So blending outward. Don't need to be so choked up on this brush. And then kind of tighten it up and just keep the blend really kind of small up in this area. It kind of looks like I'm blending away this shade, which I think when I watched the reviews for this that's exactly what happened it doesn't really bother me too much because I will say these types of shadows kind of give me <clears throat> how should I put this nightmares you know that like I'm gonna splat a bunch of shadow on and it won't blend and then it'll end up looking like a bruise I'll be late have to run out the door kind of thing or worse I'll just have to take off the makeup keeping the eyes open and just again blend out kind of almost dabbing on and then I'm just gonna bring it outward because now that I see that the shadow kind of dissipates and I think it's probably that the bristles in the brush kind of pick it up yeah because you can see it on my brush it's starting to tint it a little bit refer p21 or refer 21 and grabbing Sydney Grace's mint green I'm gonna put that all over the lid may wet my brush but I will start the initial application dry and we'll see where we need to go from there. It kind of picks up rough, so it kind of indicates to me that it might need a little help here soon. I'm almost thinking like, let's wet it just to give it more of that cut crease look. Okay. 
okay and now the moment we've all been waiting for over top of the mint green i'm going to put glam shops hollow effect which is a hollow graphic shadow that you've already seen in swatches. Hopefully you were able to capture a holographic effect. If not, we're gonna try to achieve that, but I think I will go in with my finger and just actually spritz my finger and just tap it on there and kind of almost press it into the lid. Let me try picking it <laughs> with the brush. Here we go. Let's just pretend like we have glitter glue on. I don't know if I can see like holographic, but I can see something. Want more of the mint green to stick out on the inner portion of the eye and then the holographic shade to be more at the center of the eye. I'm just picking up small amounts and then packing it on the center of the lid and then moving towards the inner portion of the eye. I really don't have that much fallout, to be honest. Looks really pretty. I thought it was gonna be more like, Ugh. Okay, same brush, I just went ahead and wiped it off, and Terra Moon's Snow Globe on the inner corner of the lid. I'm hoping that the inner corner, and I'm just gonna bring it up just a little bit so that it kind of melts into the mint green and hopefully catches some of that reflect or a lot. Wow. I can't really use Terra Moon shadows on my lid because my lids are fairly oily and no matter what, I always get creasing, but Terra Moon's is a pretty oily consistency. And so it just doesn't work well for me. I mean, the Terra Moon shadows that I have, I just absolutely love them, but they just don't sit very long on my skin. Let's get some more of this snow globe on the other side. And then just a little bit, kind of feather that into that corner of the eyelid so that we can catch a little reflect and hopefully get more of that aqua shade. Holy cow, I went like way overboard. Line the bottom lash line with the Coastal Sense, um, I think it's Dark Roast. What is it? I have it on my other page. Yeah, it's actually called Deep Roast. Dark whatever it's all the same just line kind of the bottom of the lashes and then I'll also bring it up just a little bit on this edge right here so that we can get some definition on that outer corner just like that much that's all I'm doing I'm not doing any more than that and then I'll buff out a little bit with that summer magic shade by Sydney Grace This is a Makeup Geek small crease brush. Looks like this. I'll just buff a little bit of that Summer Magic, which is that cream shadow that I used in my crease. And I'm actually starting on the inner corner and then working my way out and just kind of blending it really softly. because, you know, coffee. <laughs> I see Katie Marie's videos all the time and she's making her coffee and I'm like, oh yes, I could use some coffee. Right about now. Okay, going to put some mascara on. I have my favorite Makeup Geek Lash Effect mascara and I do have a friend's referral code and if you've never made a Makeup Geek purchase and you want to make one, you can use my referral link and it saves you $10 on your first order and it'll give me a coupon to use in the store so that I can um, buy some more makeup. <laughs> okay guys, I will put some lashes and some mascara on. I'll see you guys on the other side. Okay, that is it. That's the completed look and I just put some lashes on with some mascara that is everything. Really went pretty heavy with the Terra Moon Snow Globe and no regrets with that. I really liked how this turned out. I think that the palette was something that was extra spicy to create and it was really fun because it's pretty easy to get carried away with either the blue or the green side and finding that true balance of teal and green 
or excuse me, green and blue is kind of difficult to be honest with you. So this was challenging, Katie. So thanks so much, Katie, for choosing this palette to do because it definitely was a challenging one. Not that I think I gave you a break because I definitely think your palette is challenging as well. And if you find value in this content, make sure you subscribe to my channel down below. If you're coming over from Katie's channel, thanks so much for joining me. I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. Bye.